Andre Lambertson uh, has done uh, work with the Pulitzer Center in both Liberia, where he focused on uh, the rehabilitation of former child soldiers, and more recently in Haiti uh, since the earthquake. And uh, he was part of a, a team of journalists who worked with us after the earthquake and uh, made multiple trips. I think in Andre's case, it was six or seven trips to Haiti over the course of the year following the, earth, the earthquake. And, and it was, in part, a poetry project. The poet Kwame Dawes and, and Andre and the journalist Lisa Armstrong worked together and to do a remarkable series of stories for a variety of publications. And at the end of the year, it was featured in USA Today and, and, and NewsHour, uh, and, then, and then won an award from the National Press Club for Best Online Journalism for the presentation that we did Voices of, of Haiti, the, the, the video poetry photography project that you'll find on our site. Andre has worked for uh, the New York Times Magazine, National Geographic, Smithsonian Time, the Soros Foundation, uh, a variety of others. And uh, he is, has a wonderful ability to, to empathize with and, and become close to uh, the communities uh, with which, about which he is uh, recording. So, it's, it's a great honor for us to have him here with us today. So, um, after the earthquake, like most of you all, I wanted to understand what that was like for 250 to 300,000 people to die in, I guess, 40 seconds. Uh, I wasn't really interested in going in, like most photographers, I think, that perhaps focus on destruction and maybe uh, the chaos and ruin. But what was interesting to me was the level of humanity. And I always start off when I have to give my presentations by asking, how would we be if there was an earthquake here? Or how would we be if there was an earthquake in New York where I live? Um, for me, before I, I left, I actually did some research and I looked at some images and most of what I saw was destruction. Okay, th these are some of the photographs I made. Actually, the way I work is I usually like to shoot with a 24 millimeter lens, which means I really have a, an opportunity to get to know the, the people. This is actually a, a photograph that was made in a general hospital. And then this is a photograph made in one of the more dangerous areas in Haiti. It's called City Soleil. And you know, before I went, this was known as an area where there's tons of gangs and you know, a lot of violence. But this is more what I found. And this is a, a mother who's praying early in the morning for this image. And I was very fortunate to do the Pulitzer Center. John, you got it wrong. I went 12 times, not six, over the course of a year. And I got to develop relationships with people. So this is Nadine, who is 37. And the bulk of our reporting was on HIV AIDS. Uh, I think Haiti had a 10% rate of HIV at one point, And they had gotten the numbers down to like 3%. But the fear is now, with 1.5 million people living in displaced uh, camps with a lot of uh, unprotected sex, they expect those numbers to rise. So Nadine was 37, and she had two children. So part of the issue was, what's life going to be like for her? You know, and here she is with one of her, uh, one of her kids. This is uh, Natalie. And you know, part of my approach is, what if that was you? Or what if that was your cousin? Or what, what if that was your sister? And part of this is trying to get close enough to people so you feel like they're not other, and they're not necessarily victims, that this is somebody that you can empathize with. And this is Jezrela, and uh, she was 22. She had HIV as well. And uh, you know, when we first interviewed her on one of the earlier trips, first she was pretty depressed, and then she saw a psychologist and you know, realized she could live comfortably with the disease. But on one of the trips, she had lost her boyfriend. So in this image, she's wondering about her future. Uh, the woman in the middle of the frame, her name is Venya. And this is actually uh, a story that we place in USA Today. She was raped two days after the earthquake. And for me, 
you know, you go and first what you, you see is the tragedy and the trauma. But what I was amazed by constantly was the strength of people. So she chose to keep her child. And I don't know if there's a photo. But she actually, she had her son named Richard. This is Madeline, who was 16. And early on, there were a lot of NGOs in some of the camps that were, were uh, helping supply people with food. After they pulled out, some of the girls had to go into prostitution. So this is, this is Madeline. And uh, this is an image. Also, this is a young girl named Dominique, who also you know, was doing prostitution. But through an organization called Fair Winds, they were teaching them how to make jewelry, how to sew. And then this, this uh, jewelry actually is sold in Macy's and Anthropology. But part of this is I feel like we look at tons of negative images. And I feel like there's a sense some days of feeling powerless. And I think in my work, what I try to get people to understand is that's a human in front of you, and that could be you. And maybe people feel less powerless. This is Joel Santan, who is this amazing uh, preacher. He has HIV. And he got it from his wife. And his church says, asked him to leave, to leave his wife and to leave his church. So the first thing he did was he started his own congregation. So right now, he works with like 400 people. And the day that I made this image, he woke up in the morning, took his meds, and then just walked through the streets, you know, talking to his congregation. And then uh, this is Alex, who's a 70-year-old kid who realized he had HIV. And he was at a point in his life where he's trying to understand that struggle. Um, what's it mean to have HIV? You know, did I do something wrong? How did my mom get it? This is another image of him at home. So I really like to try to use light. And I think that's it. Wow. Next. Thank you.